Well, we are coming to the end of the 2020-2021 school year. So parents, how will you ensure that next school year, the 2021-2022 school year, uh, is a better experience for your child on an IEP? What are you going to do to prepare to make sure that you don't experience the same things that we've been experiencing over the past two years in terms of IEP implementation, in terms of uh, uh, failure to implement services, and failure to implement and provide the IEP supports, accommodations, and work on goals that has happened since March of 2020. So uh, today is part two of my six part series. And today I'm going to be focusing on what are the benefits of the IEP, the Individual Education Program. So the first thing I wanna tell you is the IEP must meet your child's behavioral, academic, and functional needs by offering services like specialized academic instruction, related services, supplementary aids and supports, accommodations, curriculum modifications, and measurable annual goals. So that's what I'm gonna be breaking down for you today, parents. So the question is, does your child's IEP include those supports and services that they need to learn and to progress from year to year so that your child can continue to earn the credits they need in high school to graduate with a high school diploma and then leave high school with the skills that they need to go on to continued education, get a job and uh, obtain competitive employment and live an independent and purposeful and productive life. That is basically the IEP special education, the purpose of IDEA, the Individuals with Disabilities Education Act. So before I get started, parents, please leave your comments below because I'd love to hear from you, any questions you have, what you think about uh, these Facebook Lives, many, maybe something you want me to focus on or questions you might have. It also helps for the algorithms to go out and for other parents to see this information that parents are so desperate to help their children, especially in this situation that we've been experiencing over the past two years with virtual schooling. And if you like and share the video, it's even better because then parents are really going to be able to have access to this incredible and very valuable information for our kids on an IEP. So uh, parents, over the past 24 years, I've been uh, an advocate and helping other parents to get the IEP that their child needs to thrive both in school and in life after high school. And I've attended more than 3,000 IEP meetings over those past 24 years. So all of these uh, strategies and information and trainings and coaching that I offer you are all from my Ex, uh, extensive experience over the past 24 years and I'm going to be covering some of that with you today as we focus on the benefits of an IEP. So my point number one is guess what parents it's free. It's free to you which is under FAPE free and appropriate public education FAPE F-A-P-E all the services all the supports the program, the education, the specialized academic instruction, everything I'm gonna be breaking down for you today, it, sh it does not cost parents one penny because the local state special education funding covers whatever your child needs that is uh, needs to learn and to address whatever is impeding your child from their ability to learn and to access the general education curriculum. So um, as I stated, the first purpose of the Individuals with Disabilities Education Act is to ensure that all students with disabilities have available to them a free appropriate public education that emphasizes special education and related services designed to meet their unique needs and prepare them for further education, employment, and independent living. And that's right out of IDEA a statute in IDEA. So point number two is the IEP warrants assessment in all areas of your child's suspected disability. And these assessments 
can cost the district up to from anywhere between two thousand and seven thousand dollars for an IEE, which is an independent educational evaluation that you have the right to ask for when you disagree with a district assessment. So uh, sometimes parents, when I um, am uh, assisting uh, uh, my clients with the development of their child's IEP, um, I will um, ask for many, many different IEEs because that's how you develop an, a special education program to meet the unique needs of a child. And sometimes these assessments, um, when you add them all up, if I ask for a psychoed, if I ask for a speech and language and an occupational therapy and a assistive technology and all, whatever they, it may be, can run into $15,000, $18,000 easily when you add up all the IEEs. All that is free to the parent. The school district must provide that at no cost to the parent assessment. So uh, that is also a uh, the first and the most uh, form, foremost foundational step uh, in uh, developing an appropriate IEP to meet the needs of children. So the other thing I want to mention is IDEA requires schools to find and evaluate students suspected of having disabilities. And of course, that that is also at no cost to parents. And what that means, this is called the law that's called child find. So every local school district is mandated to scan and watch for kids who may have a disability and then assess that child for uh, to see if they are eligible for special education. However, typically that does not happen. Typically the parents are the ones that have to fight for their child to be assessed and be determined eligible for an IEP, but the IDEA warrants and requires schools to find and evaluate students of suspected having a disability, which is under child fine. So that goes under assessment. Uh, so, uh, point number three is break it down. So what does it look like? So I'm gonna talk about those different services that are offered under an IEP. And so first one, specialized academic instruction. It's the acronym is SAI. That is um, essentially instruction, academic instruction provided by a specialized uh, special education teacher who specializes in how to teach kids with special needs. So you get um, specialized academic instruction, a frequency and a, and a duration of time that that a uh, special education teacher is going to work with your child and that is documented on the IEP. So that's the first um, uh, support or service that falls under an IEP. The next one, related services. Now related services is also sometimes called DIS, Designated Instructional Services, but they're the same thing. And those are all the different therapies and services that are, that are allotted under IDEA that are going to address your child's needs. They can look like, and I'm this, they're definitely not all of them, I'm just gonna pull some from the top of my head, vision therapy, occupational therapy, physical therapy, speech and language therapy, um, audiological uh, therapy, um, on and on and on it goes, the different kinds of therapies that kids need to be able to learn and to address their deficits that are impeding them from learning. Next one, supplementary aids and supports. So that could be a one-on-one -on -one aid that your child may need in order to access the curriculum. That could look like um, specialized um, programs that your child might need, um, a job training, um, uh, different kinds of uh, things would, could go under supplementary aids and supports. So whatever your child needs, that is impeding their ability. They have to address that with one of these different um, components of the IEP. Uh, next one, accommodations. Accommodations are things that they write in the IEP, such as preferential seating. Um, um, your child will, uh, they will cut down information on the page so your child isn't visually overloaded. 
Um, they will repeat directions to your child. They will ask your child a check for understanding. Many, many different kinds of accommodations that can be written in the IEP that have to be implemented and provided by general ed teachers and special ed teachers and the service providers in order for your child to make progress on their goals. That's accommodations. Accommodations do not take any curriculum and put it outside of the grade level or you know, decrease the curriculum outside of the grade level. They're just accommodations that help your child access the general education curriculum. The next one, curriculum modifications. Now, a modification is very different than an accommodation. A modification is a curriculum that is modified outside of the grade level. So that is a modification of the curriculum. And if your child needs modification of the curriculum in order to learn, then that would be a curriculum modification. Next one would be measurable annual goals. Uh, goals are imperative, um, measurable, specific, um, and uh, with uh, provided with data collection and um, and uh, um, monitoring progress monitoring on that goal. Uh, goal is extremely important and a huge component of the IEP. So some, those are um, some, most of the things that you're going to get in an IEP, an independent education program for your child. Now, sometimes when I've developed programs for kiddos, the, their program um, uh, has cost the district up to $75,000 a year because that's what that child needed. So these programs can be extremely expensive. And if the child needs specialized services, specialized programs, specialized placement, it can be very costly to the district. Uh, but that's what IDEA deems is and is warranted for your child if your child needs that in order to learn and to access general education curriculum. So that's one of the huge benefits uh, of being on an IP. It was so funny because I did a, um, uh, live with um, another mom who uh, is in a group with other moms that are thinking about having their child evaluated for an IEP. And one of her question was, well, why should we have our kid uh, on an IEP? I mean, what's the purpose or the benefit of it? And I'm like, wow, <laughs> a lot. So that's why I wanna go over this today because um, if your child isn't on an IEP and they're not addressing their unique needs that impede their ability to learn, they're not gonna learn. And their, their, their deficits and disability is not going to be addressed. And most likely they're not gonna graduate high school because they won't be able to earn the credits they need to pass classes in high school because they're not gonna be able to learn. So uh, an IEP, uh, the fourth uh, point I have to make is school versus medical or home-based programs. So a school service and a home service that is done through a parent's medical uh, insurance pays for it or the parent pays for it out of pocket. These are separate issues, completely separate issues. So just because your child's getting ABA, as an example, in the home, doesn't mean that your child has ABA covered because if they don't have ABA at school, then the, your child doesn't have ABA at school. It doesn't matter that your child has AB in the home. So a lot of parents get, you know, think of one big program, whatever the insurance is covering or maybe regional center is covering or some other agency is covering, and then they mix it up with school and the IEP and think of it as one, but it's not. The IEP still is mandated to meet your child's unique needs in the school, in education. Home-based services are something, a completely different animal. Home-based services are community, and home and um, social uh, after school. It has nothing to do with school. So if you, because if you might get your child's speech and language, pay for some speech and language outside of school, that doesn't mean your child's getting speech and language through the school district. And a speech and language pathologist needs to be sitting on your IEP team if your child has uh, deficits in speech and language. So the IEP team is completely different and your child's needs to be met during the school day separate from home-based services. So um, that's, uh, you know, many of the benefits uh, of kids on an IEP. I'm going to be uh, doing four more um, uh, a series, uh, four more 
uh, Facebook Lives uh, on this topic about the IEP parents so that you can start to think about how you're going to address your child's IEP for the upcoming school year. So parents, I hope you got benefit out of it. I put my link to the uh, Ultimate IEP Parent Impairment Program in which I give you all the curriculum and all the information in layman's terms for you to learn all this stuff. It's gonna benefit you greatly if you take part in the Ultimate IEP. It's $199, the link's right there, and you're gonna get all the information you need to know how to develop your child's IEP. So I hope you join that, and you can also purchase consulting packages to work one-on-one -on -one with me to uh, further um, uh, forward your uh, success at your child's next IEP meeting. So I'm Valerie Abrahamian, the IEP navigator, and I help parents uh, through coaching, through advocating, and through uh, teaching and training so that your child can receive the special education program your child needs to thrive both in school and in life after high school. So thanks everyone, I'll see you next time, and God bless.